My name is Ross Merrick, and this is my resurrection story. Uh, I was born to a family that didn't do anything with church. Uh, my mom always tried to do her best. She was a single mom raising two boys. She worked two, three, four jobs. I was your typical latchkey kid. Uh, mom hid the key. I came home, unlocked the door, went straight to the TV, refrigerator, got something to eat, watch TV, play video games. That was pretty much life. Got into alcohol a little bit, started experimenting with certain things. Didn't really ever get hooked on anything hard. Uh, worst thing I ever got involved in is I got really hooked on pornography. When I was a teenager, I, I was just disgusted with myself. I was always like, I can't quit this. You know, I just always spending money and watching it and any chance I got looking at it. Uh, but my brother and his wife started going to church, he invited me brother gave me an old, old King James Version of the Bible. I mean, it was the original translation. I understood nothing I read. It was August 1997. I was 16 years old, just turned 16. I got saved in my heart, gave my life over to Christ. I remember it. And then uh, some of my friends, I guess you call it, influenced me. I started getting back in the wrong thing. We moved from Waverly, kind of tore me out at seventh grade. I kind of got uprooted and everything I knew. Went to Perry County. Uh, everybody wanted to pick on the new kid. Everybody's wanting after you because you're the new person and that's all I knew, you know, was go to school, fight, go to school, fight, go to school. But it's really hard because I said I got isolated again. Uh, started watching things I shouldn't watch. Again, pornography got back into my life pretty heavy. I was pretty, pretty alone. Wake up and be like, whoa. How did I mess up today? Or that was the last thought in my mind. What did I do today that was wrong? You know, and it was always like, what did I do that was right? Well, you don't do anything right. You know, and it's just like I said, very isolated. But God never ever, I can say never ever was gone because I always knew it was wrong. Always had a sense of you got to stop this. And I met Brooke, and she was this light. I don't know how to explain it. She had always read her Bible. She had always you know, done for the most part what was the right thing to do. How she put up with me, I will never know because I was rough. I mean, cuss, drain. I was I was mad at the drop of a hat. She could say something and I would just snap. I could feel times when Brooke would talk to me, was communicating with me, um, where I wouldn't get as angry. You know, I'd be like, because she was, she was really looking out for me because I was still struggling with the pornography and the addictions to, you know, I still drink a little bit here and there. And she'd be like, you know, if you're gonna stay, you know, you can't, you can't be doing these things, you know. And it, it, I found at first it was like a rage almost, like, no, this is all I've ever known. Well, you can try and change me, you know, you can't change me. There's no reason to change. There's nothing wrong with me. But she kept on and on. She said, you know, I can. You know, I'm praying for you every day. And she said, God's never gonna give up on you, and I know that. But the change really happened after we had a little difficult stint. I could really literally remember praying the night before, because the night before, we were talking about going, getting a divorce. But the change was almost instantaneous in the way my attitude was. I didn't have the anger, I didn't have the rage, I didn't have the addiction even. Nothing I can do to change me, it's all God sitting there changing me and watching out for me because without God I can't watch myself. I can't protect myself. He protects me. He keeps his word and his arm like a blanket around me and carries me when I need to be carried and, and shows me the right way and gives me direction when I need direction. That would be the biggest change in me is just putting God at first. I can look back on it now and say you know, God put my brother and his wife and my family in my, my path to keep me from doing something really, really stupid. God was putting people in my life, this is your example, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. No matter what way I turned, I didn't hear what I wanted to hear, heard what I needed to hear. And God has definitely blessed me with two healthy babies, a healthy mama, um, a very loving family. It is the most amazing blessing in the world to be able to look at Autumn and Eli and Brooke and say God bless me with that when I was giving him nothing. My kids are uh, a blessing that I wouldn't have had
people not run the race with me. I mean, I look at them now and I'm like, it is an, it's just an honor and a blessing to be able to uh, raise them in a church and uh, be able to look at them and, and know that I, I'll get to watch them grow in Christ. And I already get to watch Autumn. She asked, you know, to have your kid come in and ask me when we read my Bible tonight before uh, they go to bed. I don't want somebody that's going through something that is dealing with stuff that I used to deal with to look at everybody and say, there's nobody like that. You know, loneliness, bitterness, anger. I mean, I've had experience with all those things. and God has molded me and shaped me and given me all this knowledge of how to deal with it through Him. What I would like to be is that light in that darkness for somebody if they don't think anybody knows what it's like. Yes, I do know what it's like. I want to be used by God for any purpose that He would have me use that He would put on my heart. I have been blessed beyond all that I can ask or ever even expect to thank God for. I'm Ross. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me.